Good morning. My name is Joy Mochache. You can find me on Joy underscore Mochache. This is Health on Monday. Kindly, if you want to talk to us, if you want to ask any questions, if you have any opinions on what we're going to be discussing, you can do so on our social media platforms. The hashtag has to be why in the morning and hashtag health on Monday. Yes, it's a thing now. And Karibuni Sana to the show. Please remember that our channels can be found on Y254 uh, channel on Facebook. On Twitter, you can find us on Y254 uh, channel as well. On Instagram, you can find us on Y254 underscore channel. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd love for you guys to watch this interview again to get a bit more insight and also to watch many of the other things that we've posted on our channel on YouTube. So today we are actually talking to one person that we call Dr. Marion Mooley. Dr. Marion Mooley is um, a multifaceted lady, if I could introduce her. She's actually an officer for PCA, that stands for Presbyterian Church in East Africa, and as well as an officer for... Um, how can I say, the Kikuyu Hospital, excuse me. And she's actually a volunteer with St. John Ambulance. And today's topic actually touches on emergency rooms and um, everything of that nature. What happens in emergency rooms and why our youth are ending up there so, so much in the past, in actually recent times. And we want to find out why they're coming in. So we're going to be talking to Dr. Muli about that. Kari Busana, Dr. Muli. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, thank you for having me on studio. Kari I'm glad Lutana. to be here. And I think um, I'm happy about the topic we are going to talk about. Okay. Because it's a topic that really affects the youth. Yes. Yeah, so let's, um, uh -huh. we've seen it. We've yes. seen it in the hospital. We've yes. seen it as volunteers. Yes. As uh, EMTs in ambulances. It's something that is really affecting the youth. Accidents, emergencies, medical emergencies, drugs. Mm -hmm. We have so much that we present with at the END. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. At the END. At the accident and emergency room. Accident and emergency room, mm -hmm. just in case somebody didn't know that. That's yes. that's that's um, an interesting job to do. Mm -hmm. But um, when it comes to um, when working in the emergency room, you particularly said that you're volunteering there. And if you're not volunteering there, where do you spend most of your work hours? Okay, um, most of my work hours are spent at PCA Kikuyu Hospital. Right. I'm a medical officer intern. Yeah. But I have also been a volunteer with St. John for 14 years. Ah. And of those 14, I have trained first aid and emergency services for 10. Mm. So I have been with the emergencies, in fact, for a longer, longer time than I have been a doctor. Mm -hmm. But generally, I've seen most of both worlds. Right. Yeah. So if I was to fall over and collapse right now, I'll, I'll be in good hands. You're sorted. All the way to the great hospital. Hands. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, now speaking of me falling over and, mm -hmm. you know, collapsing, God forbid, mm -hmm. you know, our youth are going through something. And when we're talking outside, we, I learned that 33, th excuse me, 33 percent of road accidents affect the youth mm -hmm. and that Kenya is actually a red zone in Africa, on the continent of Africa, when it comes to um, emergencies and accidents. Mm -hmm. And you corrected me and you said not just in Africa, on in the whole world, mm -hmm. Kenya is a red zone to mean that um, the the the, the, the frequency of emergency room occurrences are quite high when it comes to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And that 33% of road accidents is, is um, actually for just the youth. Mm -hmm. When we're saying the youth were covering the age until, people until the age of 35 and yes. below. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, that 33%, when they do tend to come in through the emergency rooms, mm -hmm. what and how are they ending up there? Okay. So um, actually, and this is what will be surprising, eh? the 33% is just road traffic accidents. Wow. And that speaks a lot towards, you know, what is really affecting the youth in terms of that's, that's the highest, the number one killer of youth between 15 and 19. If you include 10 to 25, then it's the number two killer of youth, which means that it is a big deal that we are getting a lot of road traffic accidents. But there are also other emergencies that we get. We see poisoning, both accidental and intentional. We see obstetric emergencies for women. That's quite common in the accident and emergency what, sorry, room. So what is obstetric emergency? Oh, emergencies, emergencies to do with pregnancy, right. like ectopic pregnancies, spontaneous abortions, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we also see Basically, work-related work accidents, because most of the hands-on work, yeah, construction, factories, is done by youth. So we see a lot of people come in with baby amputations due to machines, you know. Wow. And all this rotates around safety, around being aware of yourself, even for pregnancy, being aware that you're pregnant, 
doing early hospital visits, early tests. So it's an all round that. What are we doing? Mm. Yeah. Yes. So mm. how are we keeping ourselves safe? Are we taking care of ourselves? Yeah. Yes. So those are some of the causes of accidents of trauma or of accident and emergency visits for the youth. Mm, right. Mm. Outside of the 33 percent. Outside. Okay. The now, if we could go to the 33 mm percent, -hmm. the road accidents. Mm -hmm. I can imagine road accidents. Um, sometimes you get hit by another car, mm -hmm. or sometimes because of speed, you can hit another car. Mm -hmm. Or if you're intoxicated and you combine it with speed, mm -hmm. then that could also cause an accident. Mm -hmm. I don't know if these are some of the reasons why mm -hmm. these road accidents are happening. Yes, and as you mentioned, intoxication, it's a big deal, yeah? It's a big deal. A lot of our youth are getting intoxicated, yeah? You're drunk, you assume you're okay, and I keep telling people, I keep telling my friends that it lies, uh, alcohol has this way, it makes you overconfident. Eh? It lies to you that you're fine, you can do this, you know, yeah? And you end up finding that um, you lose something, you lose some control. Yes. Sometimes when you think about it, when you're texting and you actually text wrong things, that tells you now what about when you're driving, yeah? So oh, when you're um, texting, you text yes. things you shouldn't be texting. Yes, yeah. yeah. So intoxication is one of the things, mm -hmm. both alcohol and other drugs. But you also have other problems. Generally, and it's mentioned even in the study, that uh, youth are risk takers. We like taking risks. You'll find us, what are those races? Drug races, you know, yeah. we do things. Yeah, yeah, we want to speed. You know, you see you're, you're driving a Subaru, you, you see a Mercedes and you want to race eh? yeah the same thing with bikes yeah it's the same we take risks and sometimes we forget safety you know maybe i could ask the youth when was the last time you sat on the back seat of a friend's car and tied a seat belt you know on the front seat the car does beep beep and it they, makes you, you tie to. the belt but mm. the back seat when was the last time that you tied a belt yeah mm. when was the last time you took a bike do the <laughs> for, yeah you know and you put on a helmet, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's, it's something that we don't think about. Sometimes you find even the bike guy doesn't have anduthi, and that also covers in that they also are youth. And they're increasing the numbers because they themselves are not safe, then their passengers are not safe. Mm. So we have so many problems around why road traffic accidents happen and why they affect the youth most. Yeah, mm. we are always running, we are always speedy. Mm. Yeah, mm. we are always taking risks. Mm. always taking risks mm -hmm. and that's an interesting way to put it because i can imagine the pressure um the many times i've been driving mm -hmm. and you know i'm just i'm just like okay so I'd go for that. and then a subaru will pass me and then there's that kind of feeling you get you're like mm -hmm. this guy <laughs> i don't i don't know how to explain yeah. and so you feel like you even know? you're stepping your ignition because you're like mm -hmm. you know even me i can speed up if i want to then you have to tell yourself okay calm down this mm -hmm. could potentially end very very badly for you yeah. and then you see yeah mm -hmm. they'll find them racing against and they'll challenge you on the road mm -hmm. just out of nowhere you find you know somebody will zoom past you and he's not racing against anyone mm -hmm. And you zoom past him and he zooms past you and it becomes a race mm -hmm. and it's never it, en it never ends up very well sometimes no, it and if we could go back to the other reasons why people end up in the um, emergency room mm -hmm. for youths mm -hmm. you mentioned poisoning mm -hmm. um intentional and unintentional mm -hmm. what do you mean poisoning do you mean like um maybe they've taken poison by mistake or they've they've poisoned themselves mm -hmm. maybe to uh, take away their lives or mm -hmm. what do you mean Thank you so much for that question. And I think as we discuss it, maybe we should think about the youth and mental health. We're having a lot of cases of suicide. We're having a lot of cases of homicides. Yeah. And we need yes. to think about Honestly. where are we coming from? Yeah. As I came in, I <laughs> there was a hot topic in studio pre. Yeah. Yeah, where yeah. people are talking about the homicides that are happening. Yes. Yeah, so we have with young people. Young mm. people having problems with mental health. So that is something that we need to think about. There are a lot of cases of intentional or attempted suicide. Yeah. So they get to the hospital, sometimes you get to reverse them, sometimes you don't. But it's a rather common case. Right. And the other is accidental poisonings happen as well, yeah, especially for the younger youth, you know, when we say youth, I don't know what is the limit, mm -hmm. the lower limit, yeah, for children, yeah, we can get... Uh, for younger than 15. Yes, yeah. we can get um, poisoning that is unintentional mm -hmm. with maybe organophosphates. Mm -hmm. If it is factories, we can get chemical poisoning also that is unintentional. Right. Not as common, most common is intentional or attempted suicide. Most common is intentional poisoning yeah. or mm -hmm. attempted suicide, yes. which could be in the form of taking poison mm -hmm. or 
um, overdose on pills yes, or something. Yeah. Or attempting cutting yourself, oh, yeah. attempting to strangulate right. yourself. And, and then somebody found yourself. them and rushed them to their emergency mm. room. And, mm -hmm. so, and you said sometimes you're able to revive them, bring them back sometimes. It's too it's late. It's too late, yes. Yeah. yeah. So oh it, it's just, it's a, wow. it's, it's a real concern. Yeah. It's so what do concern. we do? What do we do about mental health for our youth? That's true. Yes. And I'm glad you brought up um, homicide mm -hmm. because um, there are cases where, especially among university students, mm -hmm. um, in a, you know, a relationship goes wrong, a relationship fails mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. and a boyfriend or a girlfriend takes you know, a, a knife or a panga and you know, they, they hurt their partner mm -hmm. in a way that they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And people start saying, Ati, hey, what's happening to this young man? Is mm -hmm. it a, a reason of mental case? What is it? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with him? I'm just wondering when those people are found, someone who has committed an act but they're still alive and well mm -hmm. are they taken to the emergency room as well are they taken to hospital just in general because i would think that maybe he has stabbed somebody i feel like hey it's an emergency to figure out what's wrong with you mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but it could just be me that thinks it's an emergency yeah yeah okay um that's a good question and um i think i can say that sometimes we neglect mental health that mental health is an emergency there are psychiatric emergencies it's a topic in psychiatry it's a specialty it's something that people do yeah and yes. psychiatric emergencies include things like suicide and to some extent homicide yeah you know we want to think about making sure that um, the perpetrator maybe pays for the crime but as always whenever we are taking someone through the judicial process, there's always the psychiatrist coming in to assess the mental status, right. to assess whether it was a pre-planned crime, whether yes. it was an act of passion, you know, a sudden thing that just happened. Yeah? Right. And I think, um, I feel like I want to appeal to the youth, Please both do. men and women. You can do yeah? that as it's you look at the camera. <laughs> it's never that serious. You know, it's, it's, it's something, I think if you talk to older people, maybe older people should mentor the youth. I mean, we've been, through this, uh, we've seen these relationships. Yes. It ends, you move on, yeah? Yes. So really, we need to calm down.